and is currently a PhD student in the Electrical Engineering Graduate Program at the University of Brasilia. His research and publication interests include adaptive and array signal processing and malicious traffic detection. Please. Uh, well, thank you so much. Uh, my name is João Paulo Maranhão, and I am a PhD student from University of Brasilia. And today I'm here to, to talk to you about our research. Uh, we propose an antenna array-based framework for detection and localization of signal, of correlated signals. Uh, this, this system is basically uh, composed by several uniform linear arrays by several sensor arrays, which are used to, to localize, to detect, and localize signal emitters located inside the, 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 the system. So this is the, 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 the outline. First, I, I will talk about the uh, motivation, the, the data model. Next, uh, I'll introduce the proposed framework, some simulation results, and uh, we finish with a, a brief conclusion. Uh, so the detection and localization of signal meters plays a fundamental role in many applications in the array signal processing areas, such as navigation, localization of illegal radio transmitters, position tracking. Sorry. Position tracking of moving objects and autonomous robotic movement. And uh, our research includes some adaptive in the array signal processing techniques, such as model order selection schemes and direction for arrival estimation. The model order selection schemes are used to estimate the number of multipath components received at a, a sensor array, while the, the DOA estimation, the DOA techniques, are used to estimate the direction for arrival of each signal component received at a, a sensor array. And uh, in our research, we consider uh, that the, the system is located in a uh, multipath environment. So when we consider multipath environments, they, uh, they receive the signal, receive the signals at the, the sensor arrays are highly correlated. So uh, eigenvalue-based techniques for DOA estimation may not be applied. In our previous work, which is the, the, this reference three, we proposed a, a, a framework for signal emitter detection and uh, localization. However, in that work, in our previous work, we assumed that the signals, uh, the, the, the signal components received at the sensor arrays were uncorrelated. And moreover, we, the, the framework, our previous framework, was able to detect and localize only a single emitter. So, in this context, we proposed uh, uh, an extension of our previous work by including, the, the, uh, by including a method of decorrelation of the received signal components and uh, considering the detection and localization of multiple emitters. Now I will, I will introduce the, the data model. This is a, a simple data model. Uh, we consider a, a system composed by several sensor arrays, which are uniform linear arrays. So we have EULA1, EULA2, and so on, until EULA-R. And inside this system, we have several emitters. We, we have Q emitters, emitter 1, emitter 2, until emitter Q. And each sensor array receives several signal components, line of sight plus non-line of sight signals. Now I will explain the, the, our proposed framework. Uh, our proposed framework is composed by six blocks. Okay. The first block corresponds to the decorrelation, where we decorrelate the received signal components. The next step is the model or the selection, where we estimate the number of signal emitters located inside the, 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 the system. The third block corresponds to the DOA estimation, 
where we estimate the angle of arrival of each received signal component. The next block corresponds to the noise attenuation and multipath grouping, where we, we group all the received signal components which were transmitted from the from a same emitter. The fourth block corresponds to the line of sight estimation, where given the, the set containing the, all the received signal components from the same emitter, we estimate the direction of arrival of, the, the, of that emitter, which corresponds to the direction of arrival of the component with the highest received power. And finally, we apply some basic trigonometric, uh, trigonometric relationships to, to, to estimate the coordinates of the emitter. So this is the first block where we perform the decorrelation. We apply two techniques in cascade. The mute, which stands for multiple denoising, and the spatial smoothing technique. Okay? So this is the, 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 the first one. This is the mute. Uh, in mute, uh, the received data matrix is successively denoised by means of three steps. The mute is a, 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 an iterative algorithm. So the first step is to construct the subarray, uh, where the, the sensor array is divided into several subarrays. So in the, the first iteration of the algorithm, algorithm the, the subarray is divided into one subarray, which is logical, logically is equal to the, 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 the array, the sensor array. And the output of each step is the input of the next step. So in the second step of the algorithm, the the subarray, the, the sensor array is divided into two subarrays. Okay, this is the, the output of the, 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 the this step. And in the third step, the the sensor array is divided into three subarrays. Okay, so the output of each step is the the, the, the input of the next step. The second block corresponds to the model or the selection, where we estimate the number of signal emitters located inside the, the, the system. So uh, the, the input is the covariance matrix, which, is, which e e is computed from the previous step. We compute the eigenvalue decomposition of the covariance matrix, and we obtain the, the eigenvalue matrix. With the eigenvalue matrix, we apply in the state-of-the-art AIC technique, which stands for the archaic information criteria. And the output is the, the model order, which, which is, is the, the number of signal meters located inside the, the, the system. The third block corresponds to the direction for arrival estimation, where given the model order and given the signal subspace of the eigenvector matrix provided by the previous step. We apply these parameters on the SPRI technique, which is a, which is a state of the art uh, DOA technique estimation, DOA estimation technique. And the output is the DOA vector. It, this DOA vector contains the, the angle of arrival of each one of the received signal components. The next block corresponds to the noise attenuation and multipath grouping. First, we, we perform the noise attenuation of the received data matrix, and, and we obtain the noise attenuated data matrix. And we reconstruct the array steering matrix from the, the DOA, from the D directions of arrival, obtained for the, the, the previous step. And we reconstruct the, the estimated symbols matrix. And the next step, we compute the correlation coefficient between two, two received signal components. If this cor co correlation coefficient is higher than a, a given th threshold, we assume that both components were emitted from the same source. And uh, the, the both, these both components are grouped into the, this set S. Okay, uh, this step is, is, is performed for each pair of received signal components. 
if the, the otherwise, if the correlation coefficient is lower than a threshold, we assume that both components were emitted from different source. The fifth block corresponds to the line of sight estimation, where given the, the set containing the received signal components, uh, which were emitted from the same source, uh, we extract the direction of arrival of the component with the highest power. power. So we, we assume in this work that the, the line of sight of the emitter corresponds to the line of sight of the received component with the, high, with the highest power. Sorry. Okay, uh, let's restart. Uh, finally, the, the last block of the presentation of the, the proposed framework is the triangulation. Okay, uh, so we have a, we assume that we have a system composed by four uniform linear arrays, which are located at the ver at the vertices of the, the square grid, and uh, we give, and uh, we assume that this is a square grid, and we have. The, these four directions of arrivals, which were computed from the previous step. So given these four DOAs, we compute the coordinates of these four points. And finally, we estimate the coordinates of the meter, by, which, is, which corresponds to the arithmetic, arithmetic mean of the, these four points. Okay. And this triangulation process is applied uh, for each each emitter separately. So in, in, in the letter A, we have the triangulation process of the emitter one, plus the emitter two, and the final process is the, the, the localization of two emitters separately. So these are the, 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 the basic trigonometric relationships, which are very, very simple, very basic. Uh, uh, given the, the DOAs computed from the previous step, we, we compute the, the coordinate, coordinates of the, the emitter. Now I'm going to show you some simulation results. These are the, 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 the main par simulation parameters. Okay. And uh, we have four, sen four EULAs, 20 sensors per EULA. Uh, two signal emitters and the edge length, length of the square region is 400 meters. So uh, in this first case, uh, uh, the, the metrics evaluated in this work are the average localization error as a function of the SNR and the average angle of arrival error as, as a function of the SNR. And we compared the proposed framework considering mute with the proposed with the same proposed framework, considering only spatial smoothing at the the, the correlation step, and we also compro, pro, uh, compared with the of our previous framework of the our paper published last year. So in this first case, we assumed that the system had only one emitter, and we have one line of sight plus two uncorrelated non line of sight components. And we can observe that our proposed framework, considering mute, uh, outperforms the other two techniques. And in this second simulation, uh, we considered, we assumed that the system had only one emitter, 
but now we consider that the, the, all the received signal components at the sensor arrays were correlated, okay? So it, uh, each sensor array received one line of sight and two correlated non-line of sight. And uh, we can observe that the, the, our previous framework presents the, the worst results. Since our, our, our previous framework were developed for uh, we assumed it, it assumed that the received signal components were uncorrelated, and now we assume that the signals received signal components were correlated. And uh, our proposed framework, considering mute and considering only spatial smoothing, presented basically the, the same performance for uh, SNR higher than 20 dB. And the, the, the third simulation, we consider it two emitters located inside the, the region. And uh, we assume that each sensor array received six signal components, two line of sight plus four non-line of sight. And once again, our framework from three uh, presented uh, bad results, while our proposed framework considering mute uh, outperforms the, the, our pro, our, the, the same proposed framework, but considering the spatial smoothing for SNR higher than 30 dBs. So as a, a conclusion, uh, we extended our previous framework by including uh, a decorrelation technique, uh, basically the, the multiple denoising or mute, and by considering the situation where two or more emitters are located inside the, the, the system. And uh, the approach, considering mute, is much more efficient than our previous work. Okay? And uh, as in future improvements, we, we propose to consider a system with, with a greater amount of EULAs. Uh, we also propose the detection and localization of emitters in 3D scenarios. And we also, pro we also consider uh, in a future work uh, that multipath component grouping consider approaches without the use of thresholds. So in, in our work, we consider the use of thresholds to determine if, uh, if a, a pair of received signal components were emitted from the same source or no. So we, we want to extend this work by, by considering other approaches. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Are there questions? Okay. Um, I'm curious about the impact of the number of uh, correlated signals on the uh, dimension of the array. Uh, for example, uh, if you have only one correlated signal, um, I suppose that your array must be uh, less, mm, longer than if you don't have uh, correlated signals. If I have two, three, four correlated signals, how much uh, elements I have to add to the array in order to have a, a good smoothing, uh, of smoothing process? Okay, in our simulations, we consider uh, each sensor array has 20 sensors, okay? And uh, the worst case, the, the each sensor array received six signal components, two line of sight plus four non-line of sight. And uh, we did not investigate the, 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 the impact on the, 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 on the, the algorithm performance. Uh, if we, we have, uh, for example, 15 Receive signal components. Uh, if you if you have to 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 increase the the, 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 the amount of sensors, uh, this is this could be a future improvement of our, of work, but we have to, to investigate this, this this better. Okay, thank you. And uh, thank you very much again. Uh, I invite uh, Danilo Alakira. Uh, Dr. Danilo Alakira 
received his bachelor degree in communication network engineering from the University of Brasilia. He was member of NNET Consultoria Junior, Junior Enterprise of the Communication Networks Engineering Course, and also was an intern of the Brazilian Federal Audit Court. He was a CAPES of the MEX scholarship holder, having studied electrical and communication engineering at Frankfurt uh, University of Applied Science. Japanese language and cultural at Osaka University, uh, and currently is a candidate of the MEX Research Student Scholarship offered by the Japanese government, aiming to propose his master degree. His research interests are signal processing for telecommunications, antenna array signal processing, information theory, digital communication systems. Okay, please. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Daniela Kira Andu, and from now I'm going to present to you the results of my work entitled A Novel Direction of Arrival Estimation Algorithm via Received Signal Strength of Directional Antennas. Uh, first, I'll talk about the motivations and objectives of this work. Then I will uh, present to you our proposed RSS-based DOA estimation algorithm. Then I'll present to you the results we obtained from the field experiments. And finally, I'll talk about the conclusions we drew uh, throughout this uh, study. In the past years, the selling of drones for commercial use has risen considerably. But that was also followed by the increasing number of accidents and incidents involving them. Uh, for instance, a drone invaded the Congonhas Airport in Sao Paulo in 2017, causing its closing for over two hours, and therefore, uh, resulting, uh, and therefore, uh, sorry, uh, causing economical losses for the airport, the airlines, etc. Thus, the implementation of a low-cost system capable of detecting those invading drones became necessary. Uh, having that said, one of our work possible applications is then the localizing of drones. But why directional antennas? Well, uh, their main advantages over omnidirectional ones are uh, mutual coupling between them is reduced. Uh, they are able of focusing their uh, radiation power to the, in the desired direction, and they have a longer coverage region. Then why a received signal strength RSS-based DOA estimation algorithm? Well, differently from the traditional phase-based ones, uh, this one requires less computational complexity, and it can be embedded in simpler hardware. And the objectives of our study are to verify if the proposed technique is precise and efficient, uh, to find the best angular spacing between the antennas, and to verify the outdoor performance of our proposed algorithm during field experiments using off-the-shelf equipment. Uh, the authors, Cedronali, etc., they wrote uh, this paper on which they present the theoretical analysis and experimental evaluation of a new beam switch antenna as shown in the figure. The motivation for their study was the indoor positioning of wireless devices, for example, a base station. However, what actually matters for us is how they calculated, how they estimated their direction of arrival. For the localizing of a source, they made use of the, R, the measured RSS differences between every antenna of their array. And finally, to estimate the direction of arrival, they used the music algorithm. Why then using uh, those differences? This will be clearer soon in this presentation. Well, this figure graphically represents uh, an array with M uh, directional antennas and the transmitter position, where phi is the angular spacing between the antennas. Theta is the transmitter uh, direction of arrival. And sigma phi is the perturbation in the angular spacing. 
Now I'll explain to you why we're using those RSS differences. Well, from the freeze transmission equation, we have that PIRX is the RSS value measure on the I's receiver antenna. PTX is the transmitted signal power. GTX uh, is the transmitted directivity gain. GIRX is the directivity gain of the I receiver. RI is the distance between the transmitter and the I receiver. And F is the transmission frequency. By subtracting this equation with the below equation, we obtain the difference between the receiver's directivity gains only. So our proposed technique works in the following way. First, we compute the matrix P, which contains the RSS differences between every two antennas of the array. Then we compute the matrix G theta, which contains the gain differences between every two arrays of uh, every two antennas of the array. Uh, next, we calculate the spatial power response given by this equation. Uh, and finally, to, in order to estimate the direction of arrival, we maximize the spatial power response. So the main objectives of our simulations are calculation of the best angular spacing between the antennas, validation of the proposed algorithms, and a comparison with existing DOA algorithms, for instance, the music and conventional ones. Uh, our simulation parameters are theta, the transmitter position, phi, angular spacing between antennas, sigma phi, perturbation of the angular in the angular spacing, number of snapshots, and signal to noise ratio. The figure on the left shows us the gain, uh, the directivity gain pattern of a Yagi Uda antenna, which is the same one we used during this experiment. The graph on the left, on the right, shows us uh, the directivity gain pattern of a four Yagi Uda antenna array with angular spacing of phi equal to 40 degrees. When we simulate a transmitter uh, being placed minus 50 degrees uh, from the array, we obtain the spatial power response uh, plotted in this figure. The figure on the right shows us the absolute estimation error for varying values of phi and theta while maintaining constant the value of sigma phi. From that graph, we then calculate the root mean square error for all values of phi, thus obtaining this graph over here. And as you can see, uh, we can then conclude where the best angular space in phi lies, exactly here, under the 10 degrees RMSA, RMSE. Those two graphs illustrate uh, the comparison between our proposed technique with uh, the music technique, the dash dotted, dot, uh, dash dotted lines, and the convention one, the solid line. The graph on the left, we maintain a constant number of snapshots while varying the SNR. On the other hand, the graph on the right side, uh, we maintain constant the SNR while varying the number of snapshots. Now I'll uh, present to you the ex experiments we perform. So first, the equipment we use. A ADF MCOM S5 EBZ mother, uh, board, uh, a NTSC transmitter, a VGA video camera, uh, Yagi Uda antennas, and a LHCP transmitter antenna. Uh, we place the Yagyu antennas on top of a wooden base separated 20 centimeters apart and with a angular spacing of phi uh, 40 degrees. Both transmitter and receiver arrays were placed 115 centimeters from the ground on top of a tripod uh, and separated 38 meters apart. While the NS, while the NS NTSC transmitter sends data uninterruptedly. Uh, we, uh, we rotated the, the receiver base 
from minus 90 degrees to plus 90 degrees while capturing the data for approximately 20 seconds at paces of 10 degrees. And the results are this one. Uh, as you can see, the red solid line is the true direction of arrival. And uh, our proposed technique, the, the black circle, almost follows the same pattern, showing that it actually did a, a good estimation. Uh, in fact, from 19 direction of arrivals, from nine, minus 90 degrees to plus minus degrees at paces of 10, uh, we obtained 14, uh, 14 uh, good, good estimations. Uh, and by good, I say with small error, smaller than sometimes five degrees. And thus, we can conclude that our uh, proposed technique uh, outperform, not overperform, outperform the music algorithm. As you can see, the music algorithms are the purple axis. So pretty much, they stay completely far away from the true direction of arrival. So concluding our work, um, we can say that we managed to create a complete hardware and software framework for, the, for a direction of arrival estimation algorithm with the objective of localizing drones. And in fact, as I said before, we were able to correctly estimate, well, almost correctly estimate, 14 direction of arrivals from 19, thus outperforming the music algorithm. But it was slightly the same uh, performance as the conventional one. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Are there questions? Curiosities? Okay. I have um, a couple of fast questions. Yeah. The first sure. one, um, <coughs> did you study the sensibility of the algorithm uh, with the level of noise? During simulations, we, uh, the noise we simulated was actually the perturbation in the angular space in between the antennas, mm. because since we thought um, okay. a true array, we, we don't have like the right equipment to actually put the antennas like 40 degrees apart from each other, so we suppose there was a perturbation in that. And we okay. suppose this perturbation could be 2.5 degrees. And that was pretty much the, the mm. noise uh, oh, uh, first, like the, the noise in the um, the capture receive signal strength as well. We also we also mm. did some considerations in that. Okay, and uh, second question: uh, Do you think that using also the frequency, uh, this method can be improved? Means uh, you measure the signal at different frequencies. Uh, actually, we didn't we did not think about this because why we we maintain the same frequ uh, the, the same frequency. It was because we use the, the frequency they are normally used by drones, the okay. commercial drones. So they use like the NTSC frequency, was, which was around 5.8 oh gigahertz. So we did not actually evaluate other frequencies, but we're actually trying to make like a system which can first uh, sweep around the whole spectrum to search for like a source. And then if we, uh, if we seek, if we see any like sort of like, oh, in, in, this, in this range of frequency there is a source, then we can, could use the, the algorithm. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you for your attention. Now uh, it's my pleasure.